thousands of hardware manufacturers have worked together to develop specialized hardware to be able to trace millions of rays per second to create super realistic looking graphics. Today I'm going to disregard all of their work by creating a ray tracer in Python. After all, a ray tracer is just a better ray caster and it only took like two videos to finish that project. There's a crucial decision that must be made before I start work on the display. Will it be real-time rendered to create playable scenes which will require performance optimization to the point of brain rot, or will I make a static, boring scene? So here's what that will look like. Now to start this off, I need a vector class with necessary functions to make vector math easy. Python classes have things called magic methods or dunder methods that allow you to use regular Python methods and operations on these classes. For example, the dunder add method lets you write your own functionality for when the add operation is done to the class. Now we just need to copy and paste that method a few more times for more operations and you're good. It's now time to work on object rendering. There's generally two ways to go about casting rays. You can either move the ray step by step in the direction it's pointing, which for some odd reason makes your computer fan spin faster, or you can use the smarter way, which is math. Let's take a ray and a sphere. The ray has an origin and a direction, the sphere has a position and a radius. To find out if the ray hits the sphere and where, we need to do some math. Now with this knowledge, we can create a ball. This may be very unimpressing, but wait to see what I have in store next. Three balls. That's two more balls than I had before. This isn't that impressive because you can just do the same thing in Paint 3D in 10 seconds. So one of the key parts of a ray tracer is shading. To achieve this, we need to grab surface normals based on where the ray hit the object. Using this, we can create an interesting graphic that converts the normal position into a color. To get an accurate shading on the sphere, we need to get the dot product between the normal from earlier and the inverse of the direction from a directional light source. This creates a dark undershadow from where the normals point away from the light source. Now to make this engine official, we need that checkerboard that every basic ray tracer has for some reason. This is easier to implement than the sphere, because all you really need to do is check if the ray will ever go under a certain Y level, and see where it ends up on the plane. Then we can grab the coordinates and plug them into an if statement to return one of its two colors. Do you see what's wrong with this image? Here, I'll zoom in. There's no shadows on the ground. This can easily be fixed by casting a ray from the place that it was hit to the light source. If there's an object in the way, make a shadow. Now one of the things that makes a ray tracer, well, a ray tracer, is having reflections on everything. To make reflections, you bounce a ray using a formula involving the normal from earlier and the starting ray. This is pretty easy to implement by just creating a loop and adding the color based on every reflection. The final thing that needs to be added is a skybox, which is basically a texture that wraps around the scene giving it a nice background. To implement this is pretty simple, from following this function from Wikipedia to get the image coordinates from array direction. After this project, I think I'm going to let my CPU cool off for a bit before doing another ray tracing project.